beautiful day to be a Raider. I never wanted to be anything but a Raider. Man, I don't want to be no Chief. I don't want to be no Bronco. I sure don't want to be no Charger. I don't rock red. I don't rock orange. I don't rock yellow and blue. I rock the silver and black. I represent the shield, the sword. You know what I'm talking about, Raider Nation. We rep the silver and black. The Oakland Raiders. The LA Raiders. The Las Vegas Raiders. What's up, Raider Nation? I am the Commish, coming to you live from Hardcore Challenge Live Studios, deep behind the enemy line. This is Raider Reaction. Your granddaughter is being born right now. That is good news right there. I hope everything is going fine. Esther, that's spectacular news. Raider Nation for life, absolutely Jason. Every weeknight, Oakland Raiders football goes coast to coast. We start out with an hour with the commish and Raider Reaction. And then I throw it deep for the final hour to the infamous Raider Bear on the West Coast. Two solid hours of Raider flavor and insight. Starting right now. What's up Raider Nation? Thank you for joining me again tonight. I am the Commish. Tonight we are going to be discussing the Vegas odds, the NFL Network power rankings, Jamal Charles, Johnny Manziel, and a full in-depth breakdown of the defensive depth charts. So tomorrow night, we are going to dig into the nuts and bolts of the offense all the way through, all the way down to the end of the special teams. But tonight, I want you to be defensive minded when we get to that part of the show. Because we want, I want to really break down the defense. You guys got questions, input. We're really going to get into it. Raider VD, thank you for joining me tonight. But tonight, like I said, we're going to break down the, the little news of the day, and then we're going to get deep into the defense. Hi, Kaylee. Deep into the defense. Did you hear about Shoster? Really? Interesting. Interesting. Thank you, Terry. All right. Let's get into the first news on the dockets. I don't know if you guys seen this today, but... Um, the Vegas odds makers came out with their odds to who do they think? Of course, I have Facebook. You're watching me on Facebook, aren't you? Of course, who doesn't have Facebook? I mean, there's like, come on, how many tens of billions of people on Facebook? There's people that, you know, barely have running water, but they got Facebook. Of course, Kaylee. But um, the Super Bowl odds came out and. The Cheatriots are, are, are the odds-on favorites to win. They're 7-2 to two odds. But there's five teams that are 12-1 to one odds. And those teams are, are the second favorites to win the Super Bowl. And that is the Cowboys, the Falcons, the Packers, the Seahawks, and the Oakland Raiders. They are all 12-1 to one odds to win the Super Bowl on the Vegas lines right now. We're getting respect. That's right after the draft. They were updated, and hey, man, that's giving us respect. We're starting to get respect nationwide. They're talking about us on all the shows. Even the lines are starting to show it. The Vegas Sportsbook also predicted that the AFC champion in 2017 would be none other than your Oakland Raiders. So the odds are definitely in the Raiders' favor. Not only do we all think this is our year, because 
I know I do. I'm on the record. Derek Carr's going to win the MVP this year. And we're going to the Super Bowl. I got no doubts about it. Derek Carr is going to take us to the Super Bowl. Last year was a fluke, and that ain't going to happen again. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, the NFL Network's power rankings also came out and were updated after the draft. What's up, Kamish? <sighs> my odds, I'd say my odds are, I'd, I, would, I would put them fairly close to what, uh, you know, I would say we're a little better than 12 to 1. I say we're a little better than 12 to 1. I don't think the Patriots have that much of a spread. I'm telling you, I think the Patriots have a fall off this year. They're due. The dude's getting old. I don't care how much avocado ice cream you eat. That bro's getting old. The team ain't the same. They can't keep plugging and playing at all these positions. It's going to catch up to them. I, I don't believe that they're the football gurus and Belichick's this so smart. I don't believe all that. I don't believe all that. I think they're incredibly lucky. There's a lot of luck in sports. And those guys are so lucky that Pete Carroll didn't hand the ball off to beast mode. That, you know, just... Ugh, crazy things, man. The talk, the... Ugh, I mean, they're just so lucky. It's, it's sickening. Sickening. But number two on the power rankings is the Falcons. Now, the Falcons got a crazy explosive offense. What's up, Brett? What's up, Tote? The Falcons got a crazy explosive offense. So I see them putting up a ton of points, man. Julio Jones ain't going nowhere. In the NFC and in the division they're in, they're going to rip it up again. So I see them towards the top of the power rankings, currently as you're looking at it right now. We're right behind them at number three. The Raiders are getting, uh, like I said, I mean, the Vegas odds are showing it. We're, so, we're at the top, in the top five and all the pre-rankings that you see. Everybody else has seen it. It's not just us that's seeing it. I mean, because usually it was just us that's seeing it. We were like, oh, yeah, this guy's good. And, you know, everybody else was like, yeah, okay. You know, but now everybody's watching. What's up, Bobby? Now everybody's watching. You know, everybody's watching the silver and black. The, the curtain's been pulled back. You know, we're not the... We're not the we're not the sideshow no more. We're in the big tent. Everybody's come to see us now. That that's how it is now. So there's no more hiding. This year we're locked and loaded, and we're gonna come out and we're gonna rip it up. I completely believe that. Completely believe that. It's it's gonna be a spectacular year. Spectacular year. Um, man, can't wait. Can't believe it's months away. Months away. Doesn't it seem so long. But it seemed like forever till the draft got here. So, the draft's come and gone. And you got... We talked about free agents last night and, and who, the, who the top free agents that were left. And coming into yesterday, the top free agent that was left, if you were looking at the board of guys that off past talent, was Jamal Charles. Now, the Donkeys signed Jamal Charles to, to a one-year deal. It's very incentive-laden. So, I mean, they, it's really not a bad deal for the Donkeys because if, if there's not a terrible lot of risk for them in this deal. But the, inter the interesting twist that came out today that he was recommended by the Chiefs medical staff when they had released him and he didn't pass his physical back in February that they recommended that he retire. That it wasn't a good idea for him to play football anymore. And that he should retire. So, like I said, that dude is held together with tape and gum at the knees. He's had four surgeries. And when the other team is telling you to retire, and they would just as soon release you. I, I mean, I've seen him run his little drills on the turf and, you know... In the training facilities. I've seen that. But that ain't big 275 pound, 300 pound defensive guys bearing down on your legs. That's not that. That's not guys dragging you to the ground. That I, Man, I don't see Jamal Charles being able to make it through, through an NFL season. When's the last time 
What's up, Jonathan? Yes, Brett, I agree. He's done. So, I mean, there was a lot of hype about that signing, but I don't see no hype behind that. I think Jamal Charles is grasping at straws. He's not like beast mode. I don't think he's like, I think Adrian Peterson still has some tread on the tires too. But I don't think, I think Jamal Charles is bald tires and he's ready to blow. <laughs> you know, he might get some traction for a second, and but eventually he's going to be done. He's going to be done quick. I, that's honestly what I think. I don't think he'll be able to make it. I agree. Four, week four. If that's a, that's a fair call, I'd say the first, a quarter of the season, and that you'll see that guy on the shelf. He'll be banged up the rest of the season. He'll be ineffective, and you know we'll all be talking about oh, you know, Jamal Charles was good. You'll be hearing all the talking heads. He'll be was while he's sitting on the bench. Now speaking of another was who's been in the news when we were talking about free agents last night, we didn't get to this fella, Johnny Manziel, Johnny Football. So there was some talk of him going to the Saints. He's just an interesting story, man. You know, the kid the kid gets drafted high. And, man. <laughs> and then he's just gone. I mean, I would give, like, part of an extremity to have as much talent as this kid had. You know? He had the world in the palm of his hand. He could have, if, ah, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate to see somebody just throw their talent away like that. Because you don't get that back. You don't ever get a B23 again. Trust me. <laughs> you don't ever get a B23 again. Oh, no. <laughs> as much as I feel 23 on the inside, bro, I don't feel it on the outside at all. But, you know, the kid had talent. And... Unfortunate, unfortunate story. So, I mean, he's out there. You got him, you got Kaepernick, and you got, uh, you got, um, oh, Cutler. You got them three hanging out there. Those three, uh, free agents. And, oh, I don't know, those guys. Charles has always been a Raider killer, but I, he, I think he's done, Brett. I think he's done. I absolutely think he's done. <laughs> yeah, I hope not, Frank. Hope he doesn't show up for the Raiders game. I hope not. I hope not. What's up, Raider VD? All right. So let's get we got those guys out of the way. Let's talk some. Let's talk some silver and black. I want to get deep into the defense tonight. I've done a lot of research on the defense. I've done a lot of research on the offense, too, but we're going to get in that tomorrow. So I want you all to get defensive-minded now. Defense. We're going to talk about defense and who we've got on our team, who we got to weed through, and who, what our depth chart is going to look like coming in. Well, wait, well, well, let's get into what it looks like right now after the draft. D, J. Chuck, that's right. Because... <laughs> I mean, once I started digging into this a little deeper than I had since last season, because, you know, frankly, I was waiting to see what happened in free agency in the draft before I really sat back and looked at it. But there's a... Man, our defense don't look too bad. I mean, if you really stop and think about it... Yes, let's get into the de defensive tackles first. All right? Let's get into our defensive tackles. Defensive tackles slash no good guard, depending on what set we're in. On the right side, you got Justin Ellis and Trayvon Hester. I mean, Justin Ellis, he's solid. I mean, he's solid. He's a big dude. He's been with the Raiders for four years now. And Steven, you got you got to let it go, man. You got you got to let the Alden Smith go. It's, I know, it, it was, she was, she's like the cute girlfriend, man. You really liked her. She had a nice personality and all. She was really good looking, but you broke up. We just got to let it go. We just got to let it go. It's been over a year now. We just got to let it go. We can't talk about Alden Smith no more. We ain't had Alden Smith. This team don't even know who Alden Smith is. What's up, Raider Taz? 
They've moved past, they, they went the whole season without that guy. So we can't talk about him. Now, if all of a sudden they just drop Alden Smith on our door, then we'll talk about him. But as far as I'm concerned, he's been retired as basically as long as Marshawn Lynch. He's sitting on the couch. <laughs> so, you know, this team don't need him. We've, we're, adding, we're adding young guys. We don't need guys like this. We don't need troublemakers like that on the team. We don't need guys like him in the dog beer. We don't need guys like that on the team. This is a good team. This is a young team. We don't have problems. Nobody's getting in trouble. We don't need to add oil to the water. The water's clean. Let's leave it that way. That guy just... I mean, it's not that hard to not get in the paper. He can't stay out of the paper. I mean, not only are you getting in trouble, man, you get in trouble and people are catching you on camera and... It's seriously. All the money you got, man. Take a limo. Limos aren't that expensive. Have somebody drive you. Oh. So, enough on Alden Smith. Alright, because, like I said, man, he's like that old girlfriend. We just gotta let him go. It's fond memories, but let him go. So on the right side, we got Justin Ellis. Justin Ellis right now is the number one. He's the number one. I mean, he's a solid dude. Four-year guy. He's solid. Defensive tackle, 6'2", 335. Big, big hole in the middle. Now on the other side, if you were looking at the, if you're looking at the right tackle, or excuse me, the left defensive tackle, you're looking at Darius Latham right now, who's probably the number one, with the new rookie, Eddie Vanderdoes, sitting right behind him, right behind him. I and I think I don't, I think Vanderdoes could be starting possibly very quickly if he has a good preseason. So and then you've got you got Jimmy Bean back there, who's kind of the the other guy hanging out back there in the tackle position. So, then we did pick up, you know, the young guys, two guys in the draft, got Vanderdose, and then we picked up the, uh, the late round kid, the undrafted free agent, where did he go, what was his name, we picked him up. So, we are adding some talent there, defensive tackle, but if you're looking at the depth chart right now, you're looking at Justin Ellis and you're looking at Darius Latham. Those are your two starters. Right now. Out of the gate. I'm expecting big things out of Vanderdoes, too. J. Chuck, I can honestly see him being the starter over Latham, for sure, by the time the season starts. So that's what I'm saying. If that guy has a good preseason, I see him stealing that job. Because, I mean, they drafted that kid for a reason. And they want him to play. And they, they drafted these young kids so they could play. Now, at our end positions, we'll start with right end first. Because we all know what's going on on the left end. I mean, that we all know what's going on over there. It's a player of the year and all. You got Mario Edwards Jr. Absolutely, J. Chuck. The right end. He's obviously are looking like the starter right out of the gate. I don't see Denisio Autry or Brandon Jackson really challenging him. They're just plug-ins. I mean, Jackson's a big guy. He's 6'4", 268. Autry's big at 6'5", 270. But 6'3", 280, Mario Edwards Jr., man. If he can stay healthy, that kid's a beast. He's a beast. He's only in his third year out of Florida State, and that kid's good. He's really good. He's got uh, he's got two total sacks on his career. You know, like to see him get in there a little more. Maybe maybe Khalil will uh, share a little this season and let uh, let Edwards get to get a little more action, get a little more stat line going on. So maybe we'll see that. But you know, we are we do got some depth there with Autry and Jackson. We've got some depth there, at the right end position. So, but if Edwards can stay healthy. Let's go after Ray Rice. Oh, we don't need Ray Rice. <laughs> no, we don't want. I don't even want the guy that beats their dog. I especially don't want the guy who's beating on women. So, you know, I didn't really want the guy who was beating on his kids. Let's just not have guys that beat on anything. 
except the opposing team. <laughs> of course he's joking, I know, but... You would have to be joking. Ray Rice is the punchline of a joke now. You know, no pun intended. But... You no, know, he is. <laughs> now on the other end, obviously... Obviously, I, exactly, Assassin Angel Eyes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, we got the Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, franchise player. We're going to lock him down. I hope so, J. Chuck. I hope so. Because that's, that's the guy sitting... Ward is the guy sitting behind... <laughs> Ocho Cinco. Isn't Ocho Cinco playing like the Mexican League now? Isn't he playing in, like, the Mexican Football League? Like, he's not in the CFL. He's in something else. I believe... I'm serious. I think so. Isn't he in the, uh... Isn't he in the Mexican Football League? Which I had found out not too long ago that Mexican, Mexico has an American Football League down there. I found that to be interesting. Did not know that. Some interesting football knowledge. Now, I agree, J. Chuck. I hope Ward shows up. Because if Ward shows up this season, man, he's an extra guy we can plug in. He can spell guys. We can move him up and down the line. We can stick him over it, right, to, to spell Edwards. He can move around. If he, freak, if he shows up this season, he needs to show up a little more. But having Khalil Mack down there, oh, man. That dude. That dude is... I mean, the, the fact you get Khalil Mack and we got their car in the same draft three years ago is just, uh, that's just nasty. That's just nasty. I'm telling you. Just nasty. Uh, I can't wait to see what Khalil Mack's going to do this year when you put all these young kids around him. So, I mean, that's pretty much our defensive line. I would say our four starters... Just to recap on the defensive line are Darius Latham, Justin Ellis, Mario Edwards, and Khalil Mack. Man, that's not a bad defensive line, guys. That's not a bad defensive line. And if you look at the backups behind them, you got Ward, you know, you got Autry, you got some solid backups behind them. You got Vanderdose, the young rookie. That's a solid squad. I agree, Frank, and we're going to get there. We're working our way back. So let's touch on next Corey James. Now we're going to talk about Carr tomorrow, Assassin Angel Eyes. you got to think defense. We're going defensive-minded today. Then tomorrow we're going to go offensive-minded, and we're going to dig deep into the offense tomorrow. Defense tonight, offense tomorrow. So... Middle linebacker. This was the... Yes, share, share, share. Please, everybody, share. Like. I like seeing the thumbs flying up there. If you're watching, share it. Invite a friend. Throw up a like. Let me know you're out there. <laughs> I think people are sleeping on Ben Henney a little bit, too. Corey James is solid. Solid. Corey James is solid. He's okay. And he's not a bad guy. He's 6'1", 229. He needs to get a sack. He's never got a sack. You know, he's got he's got 39 career solo tackles. I mean, he needed great last season. You know, 2.5 sacks. Career. He didn't get any last season. So, you know, he needs to, needs to step it up there. But then we got Marquell Lee. We picked him up. Late rounder. Everybody at the draft party I was at went crazy. They had been wanting a... Linebacker bad in the draft. I mean, all everybody. Raider Nation wanted a linebacker bad. We wanted a corner. We wanted a defensive lineman, and we wanted a linebacker. So we got one. He's a project, but he might be all right. You never know. You know, some some young, some young blood. In the, hey, give the kid a chance. You never know what a guy's going to do when they get they're there. He's there, man. He's made it. You're in the NFL, and you're a third stringer basically right now. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? I think he's solid, Assassin Angel Eyes. I think he is solid. 
I think that kid. I think some of our late round guys are. We got some diamonds in the rough. I really think so. Maybe I'm optimistic, and I, I am an optimistic kind of guy. But you know, I like to think the I like to be positive. This is a positive time of the year. You know, there's there's time to get down on yourself in the season, and it's not in May. <laughs> oh no, that's not it. This is this is when you got to put your happy face on and be. Look at all your new toys you got. And like, ooh, look, look what we get to play with this season. You know, this is the time to be happy, full of optimism. So middle linebacker, you know, we've got some depth there. Again, it's about health. It's about health. Absolutely, Raider Ed. Love to share, fam. It's about the health. We got if these guys can keep from getting banged up, I think we're gonna be alright. Now let's look at weak side linebacker first. Before we go to strong side linebacker. This guy, I wasn't really thrilled about the signing. This is one of the free agent signings that I did not jump for joy about. And that was Jelani Jenkins. Now he fits the eye test of what you want out of a linebacker. He's six foot, two forty. I mean, he's quick. He can't. He has not been able to stay healthy though. He's had he's had issues all over the body. <laughs> and I really thought we were bargain shopping at linebacker when we picked him up. So, you know, the guy's only got career three point five sacks. And you know, he's been in the league for five years. So, not, he's, 219 tackles for five years at a position of his is not spectacular. The guy has not seen a lot of time on the field. And I, 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 I don't know. He's going to have to prove it to me. I hope I hope he does well. I hope he you know, obviously he's on the team. I, I hope he does well. You know he's, he's a Raider now. I'm I'll get on board. I just wasn't on board when he was signed. I didn't not one I did backflips about. But he's going to be the guy. He's going to get the shot over there. So we're going to have to see what this fifth year guy from Florida can do, Mr. Jelani Jenkins. Now behind him we got Naron Ball. You know he's a two year guy out of Florida, six two two thirty six. He's backing up him. Not seen a lot of action. He's only a two-year guy. He's only he's only got action in two games last season. So behind him, you got Dwayne Norman. He got one-year experience last year. Was his rookie year out of Duke of all places? You know the linebacker factory that Duke is. You know you always hear about them tough Dukey linebackers. I'm being facetious. Um, you know, he, he, he played in three games, he got a little bit of action, but and then you got Terrell Adams, he's a two-year guy out of West Georgia, I mean, really, we got we kind of got to hope Jelani Jenkins hits, and Jelani Jenkins ain't a bust, that's kind of what we got to hope, you know, like I said, I thought we were bargain shopping when we got that guy, but you know they gave away his number really wow who'd they give it to Jay Chuck wow that's crazy get your number given away now when you look over at the other side I feel a little better obviously about the other side because we got Bruce Irvin over there holding it down Obviously, we feel better about that side than I do the other side. Don't think, uh, you know what I'm saying? Feel a lot better about Bruce Irvin over there. Now, you got Calhoun. Calhoun, he's, he's kind of, he's like Ward to me. Like, I just feel like he's on the, he's on the edge and maybe he could be something. And if he could be something, maybe they could shift him around a little bit, man. Because he's 6'4", 250. He's a big guy. But, I feel like he's like Ward. 
to me. He just needs to take that next step. That's what I honestly feel like about that guy. And, um, you know, if those two guys can take that next step, if I agree, we got Irvin over there. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chris Lentz. Thank you, everybody else, for sharing. Appreciate it. You know, so obviously, obviously you're going to feel okay about having Bruce over there. Like I said, I, Shalik Calhoun. We got James Kowser over there, too. He, he's another guy on the depth chart. Two-year, second-year guy out of Southern Utah. And you got Andy Mulumbo. Third-year guy out of Eastern Michigan. So, we do have... A little bit of depth, probably more than most people think we have at the linebacker position. It's really all about health for these guys. I agree, Jay Chuck. Him and Ward, they really need to step into their talent. They've got the physical skills. They've got the tools. They've just got to be able to use them. And I think it's, man, it's just really about who's going to be the guys that can turn the corner. Can some of these young guys in the defensive line and the linebackers step it up, become a big impact guy, along with Irvin, along with uh, Khalil Mack? Can Jelani Jenkins be a solid guy on the other side? Because if he is, I mean, there's a lot of ifs here on the, on the defensive side. There's not a lot of ifs on our offensive side. But there's a lot of ifs. There's a lot of ifs. Well, Steven, there is another free agent linebacker that I do believe would fit in great here, and I believe that's Perry Riley Jr., the guy we already had. We need to bring him back. I honestly think that picking up the rookie, the late-round rookie, was because I think they're going to bring back Perry Riley Jr. That's my honest belief. I've thought that for a while. I'm just not sure why it's taking so long. Because i that's a deal I really thought would have been done by now. I'm kind of shocked that it's not, quite honestly. Ah, uh, Gerald Hodges, I don't I don't know, Jay Chuck. I, I, re I really don't honestly see us going after any other free agents in that in the linebacker position or the defensive line. I think we're gonna roll with what we got. I honestly do. I think they're going to see if they can hit on the guys they got. And Perry Riley Jr., I believe they're going to try to bring back. That's my, that's my honest thought. That, that, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I think that's how they're going to address it. I think they want to save money because we've got the two big contracts we got to sign. we got to sign Khalil, and we got to sign Derek next season. So I think, you know, they're trying to see if they hit on these guys. Because if they hit on these guys, I don't know why we haven't signed Junior either, Joe. I don't know why. I, ho I hope we re-sign him. I don't know why we haven't re-signed him. Nobody else has signed him. I, it, ah, I just don't know why he's hanging out there on the hook. He knows the system. He can plug right in with these young guys. And I think it would be a phenomenal fit. But I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why sometimes these things drag out. Like the Marshawn Lynch thing. I mean, that was just starting to annoy me it was taking so long. I was getting sick of talking about it. I was starting to think it was never going to happen. I did not have as much optimism as the bear had. I thought it was, uh, I, did, I did not think it, I was starting to lose hope. I knew it was down to a two-day game clock, basically, on that. But I was starting to lose hope because of, you know, it was just taking forever. Just makes you wonder, you know, what, why? Why, why do some of these things take forever? You want to play for them. They want you to play for them. Sign the paper. Let's get on. Let's get on with it. All right, now cornerbacks. Cornerbacks. I think we were all happy to see that we tried to grab that big playmaker corner. Try to grab that shutdown corner. Try to grab that guy that can really play out there and lock somebody down. So we went out and grabbed Gary Ann Conley. Really? Well, happy birthday, Mr. Perry Riley. Hope you get a contract before the end of the evening. Um, 
So we went out and got Conley. Six foot, 195 pound kid. I mean, the kid is fast. He can cover some ground. He's got great hands. I mean, besides all the other stuff, like I said last night, we're gonna, we ain't going to talk about that no more. That's right. He is going to bring the fire, Levi. Going to bring the fire. And I agree, Randolph. That's the interesting thing about corner. When you're talking about Obi, I think Obi they're going to use as a hybrid corner as well and drop him down and play some corner. So if you're looking at the left side, you got Gary on Conley, who I think is going to be the starter. I think they're going to start that kid right out of the gate. I think they're going to get him a lot of work in preseason, and I think they're going to start him. That's why they drafted him in the first round. I think they're going to start Conley. I think Amerson's going to back him up, and he's going to be the starter on that side. Then you got Dexter McDonald. You also got Antonio Hamilton backing him up. So right now, we're fairly deep at corner. If Connolly is what Connolly's supposed to be, if he's a first-round draft pick shutdown corner like he's supposed to be, then we're solid on the left side if he can hold it down. Now, the corner, who Obi Frank? Obi, yes, he can play the tight ends. He even came out and said so. He's like, I'm faster than any of these tight ends. I mean, he's a fast, big guy. Big kid, man. Big kid with a big wingspan. Big kid. Solid kid. Now, when you're looking at the right side of the cornerbacks, you got Sean Smith. Sean Smith comes over from Kansas City, man. He had a rough season last year. He just never seemed like he just got it. And I don't honestly, it's, it wasn't talent with Sean Smith. It just looked like he just was confused out there. He just didn't get it. Like, he didn't understand the scheme, and he didn't know where he was supposed to be. He just didn't look. It wasn't talent. So, I'm, I, mean, I keep saying this, but I think it means something. Rod Woodson being moved down to coach the corners is going to make a freaking difference. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I keep saying it, but I don't know if you believe me or not, but I'm telling you. Rod Woodson coming, moving from safety to coach the cornerbacks is a big deal. Top 100 player of all time. The dude is a Hall of Famer. First ballot. Having that guy in your ear for these young kids is going to be phenomenal. Especially a rookie, man. If he can get a hold of Gary Ron Conley oh, and help mold that kid, have Rod Woodson mold him into a corner... Ugh, how awesome would that be? Vic can kick rocks. That's all I want to see him kicking, is rocks down the driveway. And he can take the dog kicker with him. I mean, I'm all for second chances, but I don't want to see him on our team. Somebody else can go get second chances. I want our team to be clean. I like our team right now. Our team's clean. We ain't got no drama, man. You look out over the water and it's calm. There ain't no waves on the Raider Ocean right now. It's calm and beautiful, and the horizon looks gorgeous. We don't want no waves on it. No waves right now. Those guys just create waves. Right now we got a good young group. Some nice veterans. That's what we need to keep. We need to keep, keep it calm. Keep the Raider Ocean calm. And then we'll bring the storm when the season gets here. Raiders do not retire numbers. Absolutely not. Except no, nobody ever wears 0-0 zero, zero again. That's really the only one. Um, so behind Sean Smith, you got TJ Carey. Now TJ Carey's interesting. I kind of like TJ Carey. I think he could be I think he could be better than um, than he's been. He's got three interceptions. He's done a little returning here and there. His past defenses are solid. Good defender. And, uh, exactly. Jim Otto, Steven. That's who I meant. Double zero. It's the only real one you're not ever going to see again. Um, TJ Carey's solid. He, he's a decent backup for Smith. Although, this is a make or break it year for Smith. Last year, like I said, man, he was stumbling all over himself. He just didn't look like he understood what was going on. This season, he's really got to get it. He's got to get it, and he's got to play well. Second year, he's got to play well. Second year of the contract. He's got to play well. And you got Kenneth Durden kind of hanging back here. I mean, he can really play either side. 
But if you know, if I was breaking down the depth charts, you know, I went three and three. That kind of he kind of played over there a little more. But I honestly think the starters at corner are going to be Connolly and Sean Smith. That's who I think. Connolly or Sean Smith. I agree, Toe. He's he's <laughs> he's got to show it, man. I he's got the talent. The kid's got the talent. It's, I'm telling you, dude, there was just something about it last year. It just seemed like he was always not in position, or you know, he he made the wrong move. He you know, he covered the wrong zone. He he just always seemed like he was the guy who was out of position, and that's just knowing where you got to be in familiarity with your team. That's not talent. So, I think another year for him. And Rod Woodson in his ear. Hey, I'm optimistic. It's May. <laughs> you think Sean Smith's washed up, Randolph? Already? Ah, uh, I give him another year. I give him a year. Now, our safeties. Which the safeties is an interesting position. Now that uh, we picked up Obi. Obi Wan. Now that we picked him up, it's an interesting position. He's always getting burnt. I agree, Toe, but like that's what I'm saying. I, it just seemed like he was always out of position. Like he didn't understand where he was supposed to be. Like he didn't understand the system. I, I just I don't ex can't explain it because the guy's fast. He shouldn't be getting burnt. So it's it's about not being in position and not being in the right spot. I I agree. I think he got better. He did get better. I mean, we all just remember what happened to him out of the gate because man, he had a rough start out of the gate because we were all hyped oh we got this new corner and then burn 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 he was like smell like burnt toast all over the field yeah we're trying to fix that we're trying to fix that but like i said rod woodson in his ear can't hurt can't hurt you don't think he'll help him randolph oh i hope so like i said it's may it's time to be optimistic <laughs> He's got months to be in his ear. Can't hurt. It can't hurt. How could it be detrimental? It could only help. Could only help. I mean, it's it's beneficial for Raider Nation to uh, for him to be helped. Now, like I said, looking at the safety positions, I mean, I, I was like, we're locked up at safety, man. You got Reggie Nelson, you got Carl Joseph. I th we're solid at the starters there. But you look, you start looking at it. Reggie's getting old. You know, he's in his early 30s. 33, I think he just, uh, he's 33. He's getting up there a little bit. He's getting up there a little bit. But I, I really, I'm a big Reggie Nelson fan, man. The Predator with the dreads back there. Big Reggie Nelson fan. But you got to start looking at replacing him because he, he is getting up there. Obviously, we had Carl Joseph last year at the strong safety position who was solid, but he was banged up, man. He missed some time, and not having him the whole season hurt. Not having him the whole season hurt. Charles Woodson, ah, Charles Woodson should be our... See what they should do, Frankie. Here's what they should do. We should get Charles Woodson and Rod Woodson just to coach the D-backs as a whole. Because they both played corner and they both played safety. So, to have both of them coach together, that would be awesome. Because Rod Woodson actually coached Charles Woodson. When Charles got switched to safety, Rod was coaching him and he was the safety's coach. So, they've already got a great relationship. You know, I, I, that could be... That would be awesome. That would be awesome. So our safeties are solid. And then we add in Obi. Man, and every uh, Obi is a physical freak, guys. A physical freak. The kid's got long arms. He's fast. 6'4", 224. Big kid. Big kid. Safety out of Connecticut. Big kid. And I'm telling you, I think... They're going to try him a little at a hybrid corner, too, and slide him down. Y you put a little meat on that kid, he can be a covering 
linebacker too, as well, an outside linebacker, as uh, some other folks have mentioned previously, and I agree. He can cover tight ends. He's even said it himself. He's he's big and he's fast. Big, fast, and he's got great hands. Great hands, long reach. But I mean, if you were making a defensive back, those are all the ingredients you would want. So, you got Carl Joseph, you got Reggie Nelson, and you got Obi back there. We've also got Keith McGill, Shalom Luani, who is an interesting, interesting player as well. Seventh rounder, picked up by Oakland out of Washington State. He's a very interesting player, is Shalom. Very interesting. Um, he, he's, he's quick. Tight ends have killed us. Because Malcolm couldn't cover anybody with a blanket. That's the problem. That dude could not cover anybody with a blanket. Great tackler, but he couldn't cover you for nothing. Not good at pass coverage. So I'm hoping these new guys were, that were shifting into the, these positions are going to do a little better. You know, we've, we're shifting around the linebackers. We've added in some young guys. It's really about health, man. I mean, it's a cliche. We just got to stay healthy. Of course you got to stay healthy. That's, but it's, it's super important. It's super important. I mean, look what happened when Carr got hurt last year. You know, one injury, it can, I mean, one injury can just throw off a lot with your team. You know, it starts you having to move guys really out of position, play positions they don't typically play. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. So it really comes down to health. If these guys can stay healthy, and then you got a couple guys that need to step it up. You got Ward. You got Calhoun. You got Jenkins who really needs to prove it to me. You know, you've just got some guys that have to step up. And if they step up, and really do, he did go kind of soft. Tell us some, and he couldn't cover you with a blanket. He, he, that dude couldn't cover anybody. He was getting burnt all the time. We could not cover tight ends for nothing. It was bad. So, we got to have a couple of these guys step up. Corey James plays well. Bruce Irvin has a Pro Bowl season. Hey, th it could be, it could be a beautiful thing. Could really be a beautiful thing. But it's got to happen. They've got to step up. They got to take that last step. It's you're good if you make it to the NFL, but only a select few take that step and become great. One of these kids got to got to step up. One of them can. I mean, you're there. They're right there. This is the last step. They've been dreaming about this since they were little kids. Fifth and sixth grade playing peewee football. And now they're here. You're in the NFL. Take that last step, man. Be great. Don't just be good and get a check. Be great. Because a couple of these kids can be great. Ooh. No. So we have decided... That we like the Soul Patrol, the new Soul Patrol, instead of the Legion of Boom. We, we, we don't want to be the new Legion of Boom. We want to be the new Soul Patrol. <laughs> I like that one better. Um, but Obi's interesting, man. He's a good... I, I gotta tell you, I was taken aback a bit by... We took two, two uh, defensive backs right out of the gate. But, you know what? We could. What's up, Justin? Pharaoh Brown? That is, he's a big dude, man. That is a big guy. 6'6", six, six, Soul Patrol 2. Absolutely, J. Chuck. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to be following in no Seahawks. I mean, I still have Seahawk hatred 
They used to be our division rivals. I didn't forget that. I still hate the Seahawks with a passion. I didn't forget in days of Dig Craig and Steve Largent. I remember those days. Having to play them twice a year. I haven't forgot. I haven't forgot. So, our defense as a whole, guys. If you look at our defense as a whole, we addressed all of the holes we had. We've got fairly good depth at all the positions. It comes down to health. And if the guys that we have slated to be the starters and be the guys, then we're in okay shape. It's all about these guys fulfilling what they were signed to do. What we picked them to do, if they can come through and do what we needed them to do and drafted them to do, signed them to do, then we're going to be fine. It's all about living up to expectations. All about living up to expectations. So, we'll have to see. Calhoun, Ward, Jenkins, what's Obi going to do? How's Conley going to do when he comes out as an NFL starter in week one? I think Mac, Mac's going to go harder this season. He's going to be, oh, Khalil Mack is, like, last season, he just, like, figured it out. You know, he just figured it out. And this season, it's, it's going to be ugly. <laughs> what Khalil Mack is going to be doing to quarterbacks, it's not going to be, it's going to be ugly this season. Defensive player of the year, he's going to be ripping through people. Through people. So, like I said, guys, our defense is pretty solid. I, I'd like to see us sign Perry Riley Jr. to give some more depth at the middle linebacker position. Somebody that knows the system. I'd really like to see him plugged in. And uh, I think I think that would really take care of our team. And that would that would fill our voids. We're solid. I think we really filled the holes. I agree. Toe, I agree. 20 plus for Khalil. We could honestly. Have the offensive MVP this year and the defensive MVP this year. We almost had it last year. I'm telling you, if Derek Carr plays the second half of the game that he went out in and lights it up like he already was, and he comes out and lights up the Broncos in week, the final week of the season, it's a different conversation for MVP. It's a completely different conversation. And Khalil Mack already won the defensive MVP. And is there anybody in the league better than him coming into this season? Absolutely not. No way. Khalil Mack is only getting better. Have you seen this guy? He's a physical freak. Oh my, he is going to rip quarterbacks apart this season. Apart. Uh, so, like I said, I think our defense is solid. I think our defense is solid. I think we're going to be okay. Perry Riley Jr., be a little cherry on top. But I think we'll be all right. The kids got to step up. If the kids step up, young defensive lineman, Vanderdust does steps up, Conley steps up, Ward Calhoun step up, Mario Edwards has a good season. Man. <whistles> Bruce Irvin does what he does. Khalil Mack does what he does. Woo. That's nasty defense. You stick that with our offense? Oh my. That's nasty. That's nasty. All right. So tomorrow, we're going to dig deep into the offense. Same thing. We're going to go position to position, dig deep into the offense. Offense is going to be fun because offense is like just this full toy box. Of like, oh, look at all these toys. I got this guy, this guy, this guy. This. It, it's like almost like if you made your own Madden team. You're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give all these guys 99s. That's like what our offense is looking like now. It's just sick. Our offense is gonna be so good this year. Oh, it's gonna be fun to break that down tomorrow for show. So, majority of my shows I end with my WTH. My WTH today. Typically, they're Raiders, but since there's not a lot of juice in the news right now, it will always typically be football-related. This is 
football related. Did you hear that the Chicago Bears invited Mike Glennon to their private draft party at Soldier Field? Mike Glennon was quoted as saying, it felt like watching your girlfriend make out with somebody. As they invited him to the draft party, knowing they were going to make a deal to move up and get a quarterback. You, so you invited this guy and put him completely on the spot at this party when you know you were going to jump up and draft a quarterback right in front of him. You just signed this guy. To, he thinks you're, he's your future. He, Mike Glennon, when he showed up to the draft that night, he's like, yeah, they wanted to bring me to the draft party because I'm the future. And two minutes into the draft, he's standing there like, <laughs> you know? I mean, seriously. Who the is running the show in Chicago? It's great to watch because I hate the Bears with a passion. I, I grew up in the Midwest. I hate the Bears. I hate the Chiefs. The Vikings. I'm glad the Rams moved. I hate them all. <laughs> but, I mean, really. Mike Glennon was standing there. And you know what he was thinking? You know what he was thinking? Mike Glennon. You know what he was thinking? You know what he was thinking? Same thing I'm thinking. What the hell? <laughs> That's what he was thinking. Like, seriously? You guys just signed me. You're going to pay me $45 million. You drag me up here to this private draft party. Then you go draft this guy right in front of me. <laughs> what is my least favorite team, Kaylee? My least favorite team. Oh. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I. It's got to be three. Three that I loathe. Love. The Chiefs. The Broncos. And the Steelers. I hate them. <laughs> Not only are they my least favorite team, Kaylee, I hate all three of them. With every ounce of my being. <laughs> Cannot stand them. At all. That's how I really feel. So. Like I said, guys. I think we got a solid defense. I think we're going to be alright. I think we're going to be alright. It's all about health. Thank you, Michael. Please tune in tomorrow. Like I said, we are going to get deep into the offense tomorrow and really touch on some offensive stuff. So, thank you all for joining me tonight. If it's your first time, I hope you come back. Um, obviously, we're trying to really squeeze the juice out of this offseason to, to bring you Raider flavor every night for a solid hour. So, top 10 hated teams for me, Chris. Ooh, that's a good one. Tune in tomorrow. Chris, I will put together. I'm making taking that note. Top 10 hated teams. And I will bring it for you tomorrow. Thank you, Toe. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for joining me, Kaylee. Thank you for everybody that joined me tonight. Please come back. Tune in for Raider Reaction tomorrow. I'm throwing it off to the Raider Bear. Deep to the West Coast. Go finish the second hour. The coast to coast. With another solid hour. Take it away, Bear. Peace. Love, Raider Nation.